have here another mercedes sl 500 why did this van just pull up and get in the way man get out the way man oh gosh why is this van in the way it Woo, look at that bad boy look at the wheels oh my gosh something different about that front bumper those uh fog lights man this is nice look at this oh okay i see it has the nice bumper kit that's what it is that lorenzo kit Laser kit is nice. All right, looks like I have to move some stuff around here. to these ABC suspensions you have to be very creative when it comes to removing them off the tow truck when it comes to loading them and unloading them I have here some ramps that I have had to use oftentimes and I just gave him a bunch of pieces of wood uh, that he can somehow use to get the height correct so that we don't drag that front bumper and so that the rear bumper doesn't drag he has a modified body kit on here the Lorenzo kit so it's a little bit more full or lower it also has the pipes that hang down further, so you don't want to damage those either. So with this body kit, you have even less clearance than normal. Man, I love that front bumper. Oh, those big fog lights, those are nice. Those wheels are crazy. I love this. Man, I love this. So again, you gotta get a little creative here to safely remove this car. Always flatbed these cars, man. These Mercedes are rear-wheel drive. You can't drag them. You can't lift the front end and drag the rear. You have to tow these things on a flatbed. So this customer took off the 20-inch wheel in the front driver's side because that's where it's the lowest. Then he put a spare on there just to be able to clear that front fender so he doesn't damage it. Let's just take a look at it real quick and see if it already did any damage to it. You see here how it caught it a little bit right here. That's what you have to worry about when that ABC fails. You have to worry about damage to that fender. I've seen it many times. I've damaged some of mine before when I had ABC on it. That's the part I hate. When it fails, man, it can be catastrophic or very damaging to your body. I have a couple bigger pieces too if you need. Uh, would you mind pulling it down for me? Cool. All right, so I'm inside the car now. Keep going. Hold on. All right. So I'm backing this thing down now with the cribbing or the wood blocks behind me, lifting up that back end so that I can clear it. Hey, I'm going to just raise you up just a little bit here. Okay. <sighs> this red interior. God, I love this interior on black. Goodness. Alright, come on back. Come on. Come on. You're almost off the when you see these things right here right there 
That's when that oil seeping down and warping the seal. See, he has the panoramic roof. I love that. This thing is nice. Very nice. This guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> I like that. I like that. See? You gotta be creative, man. To get these things off of the tow trucks. I mean, this is what it is, man. You gotta be real creative when it comes to getting these cars off. <laughs> yeah, man, this is crazy. I mean, you're clear, it's good. Yeah. You're doing the right Let's thing. Back it up a little more. Yeah. Then I want to get you off this. We use that kind of ramp down. Yep. Okay. Okay. Do you think, will there be enough clearance once I drop off of this where it won't catch the front bumper? The uh, the wood won't catch the front bumper? That's why I want to use that other block there for a little right. A little step, a little step down. Yeah, yeah. perfect, okay. All right, just let me know. I'm telling you guys, you have to make sure your tow truck driver knows what he's doing. A lot of these drivers, this is the first time they've dealt with it. Fortunately, this gentleman has dealt with this uh, several times before. So he's prepared. He knows what to expect. So you gotta be careful. You gotta know what you're doing. You have to be careful. An extra set of eyes is also oh valuable. I mean, you have to help. You have to be willing to help. Be a part of the uh, situation, the solution the problem however you want to describe it just be engaged yeah that's that co 600 back there i still gotta get that one together gotta get that to start <laughs> This car will soon be in the garage. All right, very slowly, go ahead and back her up. Okay. Good. All right, perfect, thank you. Skills, baby. Right. All right, guys. So it's off the trailer. It's parked here temporarily, um, and I'll be moving some stuff around and getting to where it needs to be. But yes, successfully removed off the tow truck. Successfully unloaded. Pay attention, guys. How these people load and unload your vehicles. You have to pay attention. You have to help out when needed. Don't be passive. And looking for a lawsuit. If this is really the car that you love, take care of it. Be there for it. Support it. Help the driver. These cars are difficult. Drivers have a hard time with these cars. So help out. All right. It's a good tow driver right there, man. I have his information too. Let's see. There you go. Anybody interested? Oops. <laughs> Anyone interested? It's a good dude right there. Okay, all right. Whew. Back to work. Well, guys, you know what it is that I'm doing today. I'm moving cars around because I have to get access to that SL 500 up there because it needs a coilover job. ABC has failed. The customer is probably tired of fixing this ABC and it's time to convert it to coilovers. It'll save a lot of money. You'll never have to put money back into the system again. I promise you that. This car is really nice. Tons of potential. It has that red interior on black. Also has a Lorenzo kit. 
don't let this uh wheel right here fool you it was only removed so that it can go onto the trailer without problems without tearing up that fender these wheels are really nice really nice look at those 20 inch wheels staggered deep in the back some of the best looking wheels i've seen on these cars very nice very nice very nice very nice all right so let's see what this thing suffers from a dead battery and also abc of course stop cars too low uh, and it needs some gas <laughs> but um i noticed that the remote did not unlock it now when it first came the remote did unlock it but um just i guess sitting overnight it, the battery i guess didn't hold enough charge for it to uh continue to to work i could have swore the remote uh worked yesterday so i think it's just the car not responding to the remote because even the window didn't drop down when I unlocked it, which just means that your auxiliary battery is low. And that's what this indicator is telling me. It's so low that the uh, locks will not unlock with the remote and the window would not drop down. But the starter battery is good. Obviously the car started. All right, so I have here this Mercedes SL500. This is a unique one for sure. Unique in that the color combination it's hard to find. It's hard to find the black with the red interior. Also, this has the Lorenzo kit. The Lorenzo kit consists of the side skirts. It consists of the front bumper. I like that. Different fog lights, different grill. And also, the rear bumper has the spoiler also, the different exhaust tips, actually says Lorenz are on it, very cool, very cool, has it right there, also the spoiler, very cool, very cool. So yeah, it needs a little cosmetic work. This front wheel was removed so that it could get onto the trailer when it got towed here or transported here. That wheel was actually in the trunk. These wheels are super nice. What size are these? Oh, uh, let's see. 295, 25, 20s. Very low profile. I usually run 30s on mine in the back and 35s in the front. Let's see what he has on the front. Two fifty-five, thirty, twenty. So yeah, he went with the 20s in the front and 25 series in the back. I like a little bit more meat on mine. Plus I stretch mine. So to compensate, I go with a tire, a taller tire, a tire. I go with a taller tire. And that allows me to stretch it even more and still keep a lot of rubber. But yeah, very nice. Let's look at the inside real quick. Nice red interior. Panoramic roof. All of them do not come with that, so that's a nice touch as well. This is a very nice car. It just needs a little bit of love and attention. And so this uh, active body control ABC suspension is getting yanked out of here in favor of Silver's Neomax adjustable coilovers. So that is what I am about to do. This came from Dayton, Ohio. There goes the spare, not the spare, but there goes the original front wheel. Wheel. It's very nice. I like this, man. Looks like it's a, uh... are these real? Looks like a uh, two-piece or three-piece wheel. Very nice, man. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So looking forward to doing this conversion and putting the original wheel back on there. 
the original customized wheel and taking this uh, spare off of there, this donut. I do like that Mercedes, you know, typically comes with a full size spare. A lot of cars don't. A lot of cars come with a, a donut that uh, really looks hideous. I mean, yeah, this doesn't look the best, but it's practical. It's a real rim with a decent tire that can be used temporarily, of course. All right, guys, let's get this thing moving. Let's get this process started. Rise and grind, baby. It's Brandon Green, owner of Gold Element Auto Works. And you guys already know what I'm about to do. A coilover conversion. These are the Silvers Neomax coilovers. I am replacing the ABC, the active body control suspension, which is a hydraulic fluid suspension that a lot of these Mercedes came with. The higher end uh, luxury Mercedes brands uh, the make and models that were kind of more exclusive and ex expensive and elite came with the ABC. That includes the SL, it includes the uh, CL, and it includes the S-Class. Uh, it was only optional on the SL on the 350. That came coilover, Mercedes-based and design coilover uh, with a sway bar. The 500s, the 5.5s, the 600s, the 6.5s, the 6.3s all came with active body control suspension. The, let's see, these are the years from late 2001 to 2011. Beyond that, I don't remember. But these are the ones that I do coilover conversions on. And this is why I have this one in my garage. This is a very unique one. I like this. This is black. And there's a special color for it. I think it has a flake to it. It's dirty right now, but it has the red interior and that's what makes this one so special. It also has the Lorenzer kit on it. You see here, that includes the side skirts, the front bumper and the rear bumper and the uh, pipes or the tips. Maybe the whole exhaust, I'm not sure about the mufflers, but I know at least the Lorenzer tips. So those are nice. This is a very nice car. It just needs to get the suspension fixed and uh we're well not fixed but replaced with adjustable coilovers why do i go with the silvers nail max because they have proven themselves to be the best coilover suspension for the sl when it comes to cost when it comes to quality when it comes to performance and reliability these are very nice i'm looking at these wheels right here because these are super dope these are 20 inch stagger super nice super nice i love them i love silver wheels on these mercedes especially 20s nice very nice so I go with the Silvers Neo Max because they are adjustable. Uh, they are reliable, like I said. They're lightweight. When you remove all the ABC suspension, you shave about 300 pounds. Uh, maybe a little bit more when you remove all the lines, all the valve blocks, the struts, the pump. I replaced the ABC, the, the tandem two-part pump. It operates the suspension as well as power steering. I removed that, and in place, I put a standard power steering pump. So that shaves a lot of weight simplifies the, the 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 system focuses on the rack and pinion instead of the suspension as well so that over engineered pump that serves its purpose when you have abc is removed the additional uh, weight and um complication of it is is no longer an issue because down the road if it does fail you do have to remove that and a shop will charge you a lot of money to remove it that's why i included my coilover uh suspension coilover conversion package uh, because it it just avoids a problem down the road it simplifies it if you ever have to replace the power steering pump it's a lot simpler to replace than it is removing the uh, abc pump so this is nice also comes with that spoiler sorry about that the lorenzo kit also comes with the spoiler so this is a very 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 nice setup let me come back here see there you go to go to the tips Very nice, very nice, very nice. So here goes my SL55. Of course it has the coilover conversion. Also has 20 inch wheels. I just feel like when you go extreme, especially with the 20 inch wheels and you really push them out like I did on this one, I did kind of an extreme setup. But when you can, you can go pretty wide on these, you might be able to push 12 inch wide, 20 inch wheels in here with the right tire setup. Uh, even in the front, you can go wide. I have 10 and a half on mine. Average is usually like eight and a half to nine. Uh, but you can push the front also. But once you once you do upgrades like this, man, 
And once that ABC suspension fails, you're in trouble because you can really tear up these fenders. And that's what happened over here as the owner of this vehicle, it dropped more on the driver's side front. And so he was not able to get this thing onto a trailer without removing that wheel. He had to put a spare on there. It's still caught a little bit inside the uh, wheel well. It snagged it like right here. It was, it's a very subtle indentation. I mean, so subtle if I didn't say anything, you wouldn't see it. But up underneath is where you had that pull. And that's what will happen. Uh, you can damage your front fender when it fails. Um, so what should you do? Not put 20-inch wheels on your car? Get out of here. You can, you're, you're only limited by what you decide or, or compromise or settle for. And I call it compromising because why limit the customization of your vehicle? Because you have an always failing ABC suspension. It will fail. I don't care how well you take care of it. I don't care how often you do a rodeo. If you drive your car on a regular basis, the suspension will fail. It's just a matter of how much it's going to cost you to fix it. Are you able to do it yourself or do you have to pay somebody to do it? It will fail. It's inevitable. It is what it is. Off the hook. Off the hook dynamite suspension when working properly. There is no comparison to ABC. The adaptability, I guess, of the suspension always thinking for you is so cool. You're not having to give it any second thought. The, the car is going to remain stable. That's super cool. But the bad part about that is it will fail. When it fails, you, you will give it consideration. You will be aware of what the car is doing because it's going to remind you of what it's doing either when you hear the ding in the red light or when you start smelling that Pitocin fluid uh, flowing out of it, the hydraulic fluid, it stinks and your car sinks or it just starts to go up and down and idle for no reason. Well, I know why. But your valve blocks will be compromising. Your suspension will just keep going up and down. It'll up and then drop, up and then drop. How embarrassing is that when somebody's saying, what's wrong with your car, man? And you're like, oh, yeah, it's just a, you got, yeah, yeah. Well, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing when you're out and about and your car just decides to just give up on you. The suspension fails and you have to wait for a tow truck to come pick your car up. And then you have to stand out there and help the tow guy get the car onto the back of the truck because you don't want to tear up the front bumper or you don't want it to drag in the back. So you have to get a flatbed and you have to make sure that the tow truck driver knows what the heck he's doing. And a lot of them do not. And then when I speak to those who are experienced, who know what they're doing, why do they know what they're doing? Because they deal with this all the time. Yeah, these suspicions fail all the time. You have Aromatic that fails, but that's not as expensive. But these ABC systems are always expensive to replace if you're paying somebody to do it. It's always inconvenient when it fails. I don't care how talented you are. If you can rebuild the pump, the valve blocks, you do everything yourself, it's still inconvenient when it happens. Don't try to act like it's not. Or that you're happy when your suspension fails and now you can't drive your SL. But you know how to do it yourself. That's great. But guess what? While you're rebuilding your valve blocks and saving your original ABC suspension, the original Mercedes design suspension, while your car is at the shop or in your garage, or sitting somewhere waiting for you to get enough free cash to blow it until the line blows again. Everyone with Silver's Neil Max is driving their cars. They're not worried about suspension failure anymore. They're driving their cars. So give that some consideration when you guys start to argue with those who decide to do coilover conversions. Hey, I'm a fan of both. I understand both. I understand both perspectives. ABC is wonderful, but it also is not wonderful. And so you have to make a decision as to when you decide to give it up or to hold on to it. That's up to you. I don't disrespect those who love ABC, but please don't disrespect those who do not love ABC, who decide to go a different route. Silver's Neomax. Think about it, guys. Just think about it. All right, everyone. So I'm in process of removing all the ABC components on this SL. Now, that's what I do when I do my coilover conversions. I remove the lines, the valve blocks, of course, the struts, the pump, all that good stuff. Now, I'm up underneath the car on the driver's side, and I'm showing you all what lines I remove. You see these lines right here? These two lines right here go to your gas tank. Um, you do not want to mess with those. One is a 
uh, line to the tank. One is a return line, and it's like the gases or something like that, the fumes. They go into some, uh, I don't know, some thing up front where the engine is at, <laughs> and it reuses, it recirculates re re or cycles or whatever. It burns that or use that as fuel, the expansion valve or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. But these two lines do not touch, all right? Do not touch these two lines. These lines right here obviously go to the ABC suspension and they go right here to this connection uh, here and here. You have to disconnect this line from this in order to drop this line all the way down. Of course, the rear valve block has to be disassembled and that line connects to that. So uh, those lines, um, typically people need those uh, they will rupture on the back side where there is a rubber uh, joint. But this right here, these two lines right, right here are important because they can be um, removed. A lot of people don't remove them, but they can be removed. They're two smaller, shorter lines. They have to be taken off of this little joint connection right here as well. It's like a three-way. Now, those will remain in the car because those two lines run up along the engine. Uh, along the, let me see, right past the firewall, along the heat shield. Those lines are, um, shoot, impossible <laughs> to remove. Uh, they can be removed, but almost impossible. It feels that way. So I don't even remove those. But I do remove everything that goes to those little uh, joints right there. So this, these two lines right here, I remove those. And then the, this side of the blocks, these two lines here get removed. And they run up inside here. Those two lines here are the same lines. Of course, this has already been removed. Um, this pulsation dampener or whatever has been removed. But these two lines right here are the same lines as these. Sorry. As these two. All right. So I removed those lines. I saved those. I saved these two lines that run back. Do not accidentally cut these two. Please, don't do it. I almost did that one time. I nicked one. I was like, "Woo, that was close. I had to follow that line to see exactly what it was. And yeah, don't do that. Because then you'll get some other issues. You don't want fuel <laughs> leaking out of here. So don't do that. Be careful, guys. So that's some of the stuff that I do when I'm disassembling these coilover conversions. Or when I'm doing these coilover conversions and I disassemble the ABC suspension. Of course, all this is gone. Duh got to do that it's just unnecessary weight you don't need it these two lines right here let me see those are the two lines that run up inside the engine compartment along the heat shield and back down and those are those two joints i was referring to i used to think that these two lines were these two lines and i remember i tried to do a bootleg repair when a line ruptured i think uh, let's see this is the high pressure one this is the return, but this is the high pressure one. When this one goes, uh, let's see. That's the one that runs up inside the firewall. When that one goes, you're in trouble. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's the high pressure one. So when that one blows, that's, that's the expensive line to replace. That runs up inside of here and back down to those blocks back there. And those are the ones that are very, very expensive and difficult to replace because Oftentimes, well, I guess you have to really lift the motor to get access to the to those lines, and that's when it's real expensive. I've had someone tell me it was a uh, forty five hundred dollars to replace that line. Crazy, crazy. So yes, I remove everything I can. These two lines will be removed. This line remains because there's no reason to remove it. It runs. Uh, that's the high pressure um, line that connects to the back of the pump, I believe. So I'm not I'm not going to remove that one. Um, Let's see. I mean, I disconnected from the pump, obviously, but that one stays in place. But yeah, shoot, it's a, it's just a lot of lot of lot of work. I mean, you can simply replace the struts, pull out the ABC struts, and put in the coilovers. You could do that. That's quick. Um, and then you can choose to replace the pump if you don't want to keep the ABC pump for power steering only. Um, I mean, but there's a quick way of doing this, and there's a thorough way of doing this. I obviously choose a thorough way because it just you know. Take as much crap off your car as you can. Simplify the suspension with adjustable coilovers. Simplify the power steering with just a standard power steering pump. And you're good to go.
Oh, gosh. Ah. That's what I did here. Standard power steering pump. Can you see it? All right. There goes that line right there. You see that green? That went to the ABC pump. You don't need that anymore. But uh, that's it. When you install the power steering uh, high pressure line, always pull this tab back or else it'll touch the, um, the rubber uh, belt, the serpentine belt. Always pull this back so it doesn't contact that. Plus, you need that pull back so that you can clear it and install it anyways. This is real flexible. I mean, with some pliers, just pull it back out the way. You know, aren't using that bracket part of the line anyway. So, just a little tip there. But yeah, the install is going fine. Uh, let's see. So, I remove all the lines first, all the components. All the ABC stuff. Then I remove the struts, front struts first, and then rear struts. All right. So let me get back to work. Oh yeah. By the way, these Lorenzo wheels are really nice. These are made in Germany, original Lorenzo wheels. So nice. So nice. Wide in the back. Those really look good. Made in Germany. I looked at the back of the wheel just to verify. Very nice wheels. Very nice wheels. All right. Back to work. All right, guys, so I'm at the point where I am about to install the Silver's Nail Mask Coilovers. Here goes the Swift upgrade. You know they're Swift by this right here. Yeah, baby. So here we go, Swift upgrade. So the springs will be a little bit more sporty or sport-oriented, track-oriented, performance-oriented. Uh, better performance, better uh, rebounding, uh, more stable. Uh, under high speed maneuvers again we're not doing sway bars i don't do sway bars on my cars that i uh, convert over they're not necessary sway bar server purpose but with these cars here with the weight of the car the low uh center of gravity uh the way these cars are designed without sway bars because of the always adapting abc suspension uh, the geometry of the suspension does allow you to safely drive this car without sway bars um, you don't have to go with the Swift, but the Swift gives you even more, um, I guess, handling characteristics that are in harmony with what you would expect for a high-performance vehicle. Now, without sway bars, you would have to really go around a corner uh, so fast that the car lifts off the ground, and that's going to be hard for it to do with it being such a low center, uh, low center of gravity. This is such a heavy car, and it's so low. Uh, if if they were involved in a car accident that would lift the car off the ground, uh, sway bars probably wouldn't save it. If it's that extreme of a situation where the car will actually lift, uh, then, you know, sway bars will probably not help. Um, but yes, under like track conditions, sway bars will help. Uh, you know, it's just the ultimate safety, but it's not, it doesn't mean that it's not safe without sway bars. Um, it's just what it is. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a converted SL uh, in a car accident where sway bars would have saved it. Never. Uh, when's the last time you've seen one of these cars lifted off the ground, turned upside down? Never. Uh, it's just not really um, realistic. But again, sway bars, if you want to, you can. Even with these coilovers right here, the Silver's Neo Max, you can add sway bars if you want to. But again, they're not absolutely necessary. I don't do it. And there has been absolutely no complaints. Uh, from an engineer who I personally have spoken to who did... Uh, the coilovers with sway bars. He said it was too stiff for him. Uh, he enjoyed it without the sway bars, actually. Uh, it added m more stiffness to the ride. Um, but again, it is the ultimate uh, safety uh, if you want to go that far with it. But it is not absolutely necessary. These cars handle just fine. My SL55 does not have sway bars. It has these Swiss springs, and this thing handles fantastic. I drive my car very fast. Entrance ramps, exit ramps. Um, I've gotten it over 120 miles per hour. I don't tell anybody. Uh, and I've never felt unsafe. On the highway, I shift lanes under quick 
uh, last minute conditions. I've never felt unstable. These cars are very heavy and low to the ground and these coilovers are just fine. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, guys, how do you get access to these rear struts? The front is self-explanatory. It's easy, pop the hood. But the back, I used to disassemble this whole rear compartment, like all of the paneling and the carpet, the covering, the trim. I would pull all that stuff out. And the very first video that I ever did of a uh, of a coilover on an R230 or SL500, I pulled all the lining out <laughs> in order to get to the top of the struts. How crazy is that? You don't need to do that. What do you need to do? All you need to do is pull this back. Pull this back right here. You'll hear a little panel clip pop off. Who cares? Pull that back. Be careful on the driver's side because there are some, some lines right here. These black lines, those are pneumatics. So be careful with those. Pull this back. So pull this back. You gain access to it. Unplug. In my case, I'm doing a coilover swap. Pull it back enough where you where you have room. So you might need to, you got to manipulate this carpet a little bit. But like I said, you got white, you got black lines right there. Those are pneumatic lines used for the trunk, the door locks, and all that kind of stuff. The seats. I don't know. It all runs back to this air pump back here. So pull it back far enough to get access to two bolts. There are two nuts. One in the front, one in the back. It's harder to see the one in the back. You gotta pull it back a little bit. It's right there, all right? That's how you get access to it. To drop this, all you have to do is remove those two top nuts. Disconnect that power line or the plug right there. And uh, of course, do your removal of everything on the, uh, um, on the uh, lower control arm. The outer, listen to me, you do not have to disassemble the hub assembly and the brakes in order to remove the strut. You work from the inside, the inner arm. You do the inner lower control arm bolt. It feeds out the rear of the vehicle. You have to lift or drop the um, exhaust system. Like, just lift it. You can lift it out the way to totally remove that bolt. And there's a torsion bar. There's a bolt that you have to remove. And of course, the bolt for the lower part of the strut. Three bolts. That's it, guys. That's it. Three bolts down there you know the lower control arm whatever and two ball uh, two nuts on top to drop the strut that's all you got to do it's that simple all right do not listen to strut master on the internet do not go to youtube and look at strut master as to how to remove it that is the most difficult way because once you remove it that way the outer hub assembly and the brakes have fun trying to put it back together you'll be cussing and it'll take you hours upon hours and upon hours to do it the way that i just taught you how to do it takes less than an hour. So pay attention to what I'm saying. It's easy, guys. It's easy. Just like this. Inner bolt, this one, which is this bolt right here. Eighteen millimeter. I use a I think a T fifty five. This ball right here, which is the uh, bottom of the strut, which is a 21. And this one right here, which is an 18. It's a T55. No number on here, but it's the same as one of these right here at T55. Yep. Okay, same as this one. So it's just three bolts, guys. Inner control arm, bottom of the strut, 
and this torsion bar right here. Okay, you'll have to pull this up for that bolt to come out and also lift this up. I'm doing this with the jack. By lowering the jack and putting this jack stand up underneath, it lifts up the exhaust enough for that bolt to clear out. You need an extension, you need a couple different tools, whatever to do it, but those are the bolts that you have to remove, just three, okay? Just three. So, easy, man, easy. You can get this swapped out in the rear in about an hour if you know what you're doing. Take your time. First time, it might take a few hours just to figure it out, but the other side, I bet you do it faster, okay? All right, guys, I just jumped in it. I just finished the uh, coilover installation. Uh, I didn't really show all the details of the installation just because uh, I have a lot of videos of me showing that. And so please look at my other content if you want to see some more tips and some more tutorial on the process and some shortcuts. Now the car finally is clearing the driveway because the car is now lifted appropriately. Let's see how this thing drives. Right now I have the front. Oh, let me close the trunk. <laughs> it's telling me the trunk is still open. I have the uh, settings on the coilovers in the front at 20 and the back at 15. Just to let you guys know. And these are Swift Racing. Uh, Swift Springs. Swift Racing, Swift Springs. I have the spare put back in the trunk. Okay. Close all the way. All right. I have to, of course, move some cars around so that I can get it out of the garage. Up and down the street like I typically do. Here goes the uh, kit. This kit comes with, with the adjustment kit. It comes with what you need to make the adjustments if you want to use the tools. Comes with a little quick explanation. Comes with a decal in there. A little silver decal. Can't see it. It's upside down. All right. Now let's see what this thing does. See how it feels. I can already tell you it feels good. It feels pretty quick though. This is a 500. It feels like a 5.5. Five. Man, what did he do to this car? Woo, that sounds really good too. That's a, uh, by the way, that's an aftermarket exhaust system. Uh, I know at least from the mufflers back. I mean, I saw the tips, but I think that the mufflers also are, I know for a fact that they're custom. I saw the way they were connected and it's definitely aftermarket. This feels good, man, shoot. Got a little bit of get up. Look like it's, uh, it's, it shifts higher. Whoa, this is different. Whoa, they did something different with this car. It's not shifting as early. It's, shit, it's like a delayed shift. The RPMs are going up pretty high before it shifts. So they he has something done to this car. This isn't a stock setup. I don't know what, but it's different feels different. The power range feels different. Hmm. There's something unique about this car besides the exterior. I like the exhaust. I do like the mufflers. They do sound really good. Also, with the lower profile tires, 25 series in the back, 30 in the front, I can feel the road different. It feels, it feels uh, more, um, you feel the road a little bit more. The imperfections in the road, you can feel the car kind of going along with it, but it's stable though. It doesn't feel unstable at all. But I can tell that it has lower profile tires, but wide in the back, which is pretty cool. 
So there's 115 on the mile. Let's see, 115,000 miles. All right, so whatever he had done, maybe it's like an adjustment, some type of tune. Um, or, or flashing, I guess, of the trainee or something. I don't know, the ECU. But whatever he had done to it, though, it does feel uh, a little bit better. It's a naturally aspirated motor, V8. This is the 500. But it feels, I'm not going to say it feels more responsive. It just feels like it's, 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 it's pulling a little bit harder, should I say. I know that the RPMs are going up higher than normal. It doesn't have, like, m more foot pounds of torque. It just feels more. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it does feel more, more thrust. I like that. That feels good, man. That feels real good. I like that. Bumps feel good too. It's nice, man. Get that. Hey, take this thing for a car wash. It's dirty. I gotta wash this before I hand it back over. It's really dirty. This is nice, man. That exhaust sounds really good. Nice low tone to it. Very nice. Let me get some exterior content. Hold on. I like this. You know the red interior is my favorite. Now they do have like a deep peanut butter, I don't know what they call it, um, Palomino, a Palomino interior on these, but it's a newer, it's, a, it's on the newer, like the SL550s, I think. The newer SL55s. You can get those with that Palomino interior. That's like that real nice peanut butter interior. You don't see any, you don't see many of those, but with that interior. But this red right here is my favorite uh, regarding the ones that I've seen in person. I know that Palomino will probably drive me crazy once I see that. Palomino is such a beautiful, rich peanut butter color. But here goes this uh, red interior. This really looks so good. on um, black especially. You see how it sits? Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Very nice. Looks like the height looks good too. Slightly higher in the back, but I like that because you hit a big bump, it will dip a little bit in the back. So you don't want it to spray, especially if you have aftermarket wide wheels and tires. It will settle slightly over time, but not so much where it's obvious or where it takes away from it. It actually makes it look a little bit better once it settles. Uh, but it'll definitely, you know, handle just the way it is. The way it sits right now is, is, is good. It really is. I love it. I love it. Handles real nice, feels real nice. Another successful Silver's Neo Max coilover installation, ABC removal. All right, so before I hand this over, I will get this thing washed. It needs it. <laughs> It's too beautiful of a car to return it back to the customer dirty. All right guys, so I'm taking it for a spin. Just testing out the suspension. I need to go ahead and throw some, uh, some soap and water on this because it is uh, a little dirty. If I understand correctly, it's been sitting for a while. Uh, the owner um, decided to go ahead and get the suspension taken care of so it could be driven. Um, just reiterating once again, there's been some upgrades to this car. This has a Lorenzer uh, body kit. It also has the Lorenzer exhaust. It has a Lorenzer 20 inch wheels. I mean, man, this thing is nice, man. Really nice. And it also has some kind of tune because I know that this car revs up higher than normal. Uh, that 5.0 motor is a nice, very nice and powerful motor. Uh, but this one is obviously revving up higher than normal when you hit that accelerator hard. Right now it's in cold, or I'm sorry, C, 
Uh, I usually drive mine in the S. Or I consider sports mode, sport mode, uh, C, I guess. I don't know. There's some kind of brief. I don't know what that name, what the C actually stands for. But I always uh, relate it to cold, meaning that it, uh, the initial takeoff is slower. Like if it was ice or snow outside or rain or whatever. I just look at it that way. Uh, I think C, it makes the car start off in second gear. Um, and then when it's uh, in S, and I'm referring to that. When it's in S, it's a more sportier ride. Uh, faster, quicker acceleration in response to, uh, by the transmission. But I'm just uh, driving it nice and easy right now. I'm not revving it up high, but yeah, when you when you get on this thing, it likes to rev up high and it, it has a nice nice push to it. Uh, definitely, the the exhaust sounds fantastic. Um, it's just really a nice modification uh, that was done to this car to really give it that. Uh, performance that you really want out of a SL500. I'm impressed. It's almost an accident. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of a takeoff here and just see what it does, all right? Hey. It definitely throws you back. Dang, that felt good. And I didn't even floor it. I just gave it a nice, nice little push. A little bit of acceleration. That was nice, that was really nice. Very nice. I just think I saw. Ooh, this thing has some nice power, man. This is the probably the most powerful SL500 that I felt that I've been in. Man, I gotta find out exactly what he did. This is dope. Man, it's a nice push. Nice acceleration. Very nice acceleration. Impressive.